Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of my tips and strategies. And in this game, I'm going to really emphasize how important it is to move. And I know that sounds kind of stupid uh, because obviously you need to move in the game, but what I'm really kind of talking about is sort of moving into, you know, not only the correct position in regards to where it is to get into the circle, but especially when you get into a firefight and you don't get somebody down. Uh, and how it is that you need to move into a new area. I call it stick and move, um, sort of a boxing reference. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I guess everybody else would. But anyway, um, and that's basically, you know, when you get into a fight, once you don't get the opponent down, um, you're going to have to move. And it's essential to do that the smaller the circle is, and especially with less and less people. So... In this game, uh, I played it pretty well. Um, let's see. I am coming into El Azahar, and I got one other guy who's basically coming with me. And we both end up making it down into um, El Azahar. Uh, this guy ends up seeing me. Uh, I come down, and I'm coming along this way. He ends up going uh, the opposite direction. And so... Uh, I'm going to end up kind of fast forwarding. So in this game, I had an SKS. Uh, I didn't have a vertical grip for it, uh, which is annoying. It's one thing with the update is I'm not finding as many attachments uh, as I used to. Um, but this is part of the game, so it's no big deal. Um, so I get an SKS. I think I had a four scope uh, with it, and uh, I had an M4. So... Uh, Taco Your Paco, love the name. Uh, this guy, he and I were the only ones down here in El Azahar. Uh, there's some guys who are over here. So, like I said, we're going to go ahead and kind of fast forward here uh, a little bit and show you what sort of happens. Uh, that's Zach Nafane. Yes, I know the reference to the uh, Dark Elf. Anyway, okay, so here is the situation yeah we're still over here so fast forward just a little bit more now what taco ends up doing is uh he ends up running up uh this way i'm coming out of here and i actually see where taco goes so once i see him i start to trail him so the uh circle is coming in at this point so we start to uh work our our way up uh, out of El Azahar and so I'm trying to give a wide berth because I don't know where this guy ended up so I'm kind of running up to the side here and as I do that um, I'm able to actually see him and so once I see him I realize okay well this guy does not see me once I realize he doesn't see me I'm like okay it's uh, time to trail him and I could have taken some shots there, but it's just not really the best option for me to take those shots. So I'm just going to continue to run and kind of chase this guy down. And I had looked at my map, so I knew that he was probably going to head to uh, these buildings right here. So I end up getting down here. I see this guy at the last second run into that building right there. So I work my way around. Once I work my way around, um, he's kind of running into all of these buildings and the blue circle hits. Now, when the circle hits, guys, when it's so early in the game, I mean, this is the first, you know, blue zone. Um, you're not going to take so much damage. As long as you found some first aid kits, maybe some boosts, yeah, you'll, you'll be fine. Don't worry about taking damage at that point. So um, my only real focus is to try to get Taco down. I see this guy move once again. Now I see him moving and running over there. So I start trailing him again. And I had the ability right there. I sighted him in to take shots. Now, here's the thing. You never want to take shots at somebody this early in the game who is, you know, running into the blue or the, the safe zone when you are not in the safe zone. It's not like I'm still going to take a lot of damage from the circle, but it just doesn't make any sense to, to basically take those shots. Secondly, the whole reason that I didn't want to take the shot is because I knew I was going to get this guy down because he was so far ahead of me. He didn't know where I was. He didn't hear my footsteps. And guys, he is running down into this valley. 
once he goes down into this valley you know i know the area i know that this whole stretch of road right here that there is nowhere that this guy is going to be able to get to that i'm not going to be able to get this guy down he's not going to have any cover at all so i eventually work my way over yeah there i am so once i see this guy I sit down i've got an eight scope i sight him in i hit him a, a few times and nailed him again and finally right there i'm able to get this guy down so he I, he's just kind of in no man's land right there he has no way to get up this hill he it's possible he could have gotten over here to uh the buildings but he didn't so i'm able to get this guy down i rush down i raid this guy and i end up hearing some gunshots over here to uh what would be uh, at the moment that'd be on my right so what I end up doing at this point is and you know I raid this guy I take his stuff once I'm hearing these shots uh, down the road a little ways what I know I want to do is work my way back and I, I actually jump back into the uh, blue zone I think the blue zone hits before I can get to the top of the hill but I run up this hill I'm running into here and the only thing I'm kind of worried about is the fact that there could be somebody over um, over here in these buildings. Turns out that there wasn't. There wasn't anybody basically even over on this side. So based on where I was moving to, um, I knew there were going to be less people. But you know, my only cause of concern at that moment was going to be these buildings. But it turns out there's nobody there. Now I did not want to run down over to this area. Now if you play on Miramar a lot, you know the map well here's what you should realize it's not the worst decision but it's not a good decision when the circle is coming in and we're going to see where the next one uh comes into um i'm going to end up having to make a decision to get into menas generals however you say that i don't know here's what you do not want to do you do not want to basically come up this way this is one of the worst decisions that you can make uh when advancing into the next circle is running um sort of on the west side of of uh this area the reason it's so bad is you can see how one it's a pretty big valley you got to get to the top of the hill and then once you get to the top of the hill, it's pretty flat. Again, a little bit of a valley, but just look around. There are so many places for someone to be, so many places for someone to be hidden, to be entrenched, and they can just basically pick you off. And it doesn't matter in what direction you go. There's really too many unknowns at that point. So when I'm over here on this side, you know, I've got that decision to make uh, of what way do I want to go. And it's not like there's a ton of cover over on this side. You know, it's a fairly open area. But at the end of the day, the best decision that you can make if you find yourself over in this area is to run down and to get to this side of uh, Menas. So we're going to fast forward here a little bit further. So that's where that circle comes in. You'll see now here's where the next circle. So boom, I end up moving straight over to here and I take off immediately um, because I'm still looking to see if there's anybody over on this side. And it, guys, I just got lucky. I mean, there's nobody over here, nobody. Uh, I mean, there's no one behind me. There's no one over on this side working their way in. Um, I've got this whole area basically to myself. Now, I mean, there's 20 people left. This is a pretty small area for 20 people. And I'm basically off on my own. And everybody else is pretty much over on this side. So we go from 20 people. Uh, we get down, I think, to 10 people really, really quick. So what I do is I go ahead and kind of move down. And I get by this rock. And when I'm next to this rock, what I'm doing is I'm looking back over into the menace area and I'm kind of looking in every direction. I don't really see anybody, but there's so many places for someone to be hidden. 
uh, anyway, so sure enough, there were a couple people that were in there. Uh, down to 15 people at this point. So when I finally get to this rock, the thing that I'm really trying to look for is going to be people who are down uh, to my left, down in this valley area, and I'm looking in these buildings, and I am looking for people who are in these buildings down here. And it's harder for me to see somebody down there, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, I'm still kind of looking in that area. So I'm still hearing a lot of gunfire to my right. Uh, we're now down to eight people. Play zone takes a few people out. So I'm seeing where this next circle is. I'm trying to soak it all in just to kind of look to see, okay, you know, is there anybody coming up over on my, on my right? Don't see anybody, although I'm positive that there's going to be people in there. But I go ahead and make the decision that, okay, it's time to move. So let's go ahead and start moving down into uh, the circle. Now, here's the thing. If you've ever watched any of my videos before, what you know that I talk uh, against is getting into buildings. You don't want to be in buildings at the end of the game unless it's advantageous. Now, getting into these buildings is not the worst possible decision because it is a really wide open area. Uh, and there's someone who does move in here. But here's the thing. When you have the option to sort of get into these buildings, you know, what buildings do you think make the most sense for you to get into? Well, here's what people always do. They gravitate towards the big buildings. Whatever the biggest building is, that's where they're trying to get into. And that actually is not the best decision. The best decision in a situation like this where you can see where this uh, final circle is going to be, you can see this wide open area. If you get into this building right over here, you really don't have a vantage point unless you're going to get up on top of the roof here. And even then you've got that little uh, building right in front of you, that wall's kind of blocking. The best place that you can be in a situation like this is going to be in a building that's basically facing where the open area is. So that building would have been a good decision. That building right there would have been a good decision. This one would not because the window is so small. So out of all these buildings, really the only two that make the best and most sense are gonna be the ones I just showed you. So I am not trying to get into this building down here. What I'm trying to do is to actually get over onto this side. Uh, there's quick. We'll look at quick here in a minute. Um, down to seven people. So I work my way down. And the place that I'm trying to get to is right over here. And we'll set it back to one times. And I'm trying to get into this spot right here, which I do. So Puck the Goat. This guy barrels into these buildings. He ends up running, and sure enough, he rushes into the biggest building over in this area. So what I end up doing is I heard the car. I knew someone had come right over here, so I just work my way back here, and I lay down, and I'm trying to look to see if I can't find somebody uh, over to my right. What I'm trying to do is see anyone who's going to end up crossing from this plains uh, uh, and trying to work their way down here. Uh, quick is on this side. Like I said, we'll, we'll we'll come back to that guy. Okay, so the one mistake that we're going to look at, and guys, this is a mistake that I, I've made in the past. I'm really, whenever I kind of point out somebody's mistakes, you know, if, if for some reason you ever find yourself in one of these videos uh, and I'm talking about you making a mistake, um, just understand you're not doing anything that I haven't done before. I'm not dogging players. I mean, this is how you get better is, uh, you kind of make a mistake and then you learn from it. Okay. So the situation as it is, we've got OG Papa skills. What up, yo. And so this guy is healing up, took a little bit of damage. Now here's the thing. We're going to end up seeing Wah beast pop up over here. Now, this guy, I can't remember if he, yeah, he does throw the grenade. I don't know where he was throwing it to. I don't know. Maybe he didn't throw it. Maybe he did. Nope. Okay, so here's the thing. So here's the mistake that OG is making. 
he's in this spot. Wild Beast is right up there. Now, OG knows that who that there is somebody and they are right over in this building right behind him. Because he's going to be able to kind of look at his map and he's going to be able to see that there's somebody over here. Now, here's what you would do in this situation. You're this far away from the next circle. Excuse me. Um, that far away from the next circle, you know that both of you are not getting out of here. Only one of you is going to be able to basically make it. So the problem that OG makes is he ends up going out this door. The reason I say that's a mistake is the doors have a very distinct noise. So when you hear a door open, you know that's a door. OG, I'm sorry, Wob Beast knows that there is somebody over here in this building. He knows this. So the problem is, you know, which one of them is going to come out? Now, the best decision that OG could basically make is to come through this door and then out this window. Because if he hops out here, look at the vantage point that he's got being able to look over into this area. Since he knows that there is someone over in this area. Uh, he heard the glass break. He knows that there's somebody over here. And instead, the decision that he makes is to go straight out the door. Um, he pops his painkillers. Uh, Wobbies is up there. He's like continuously looking. There's 30 seconds to go. Uh, Beast goes ahead and kind of works his way down to the bottom of the stairs and he's just waiting. So OG even could have run this way, run around the side, run through here and popped out right there. And instead he goes straight out that door. Guys, don't, don't do that. Uh, don't, don't make that decision. It's a really, really bad decision. Now, I'm talking about how bad of a decision that is. Let's go back and look at something that I did that was ridiculously bad. And I mean bad. Bad. Like, guys, I'm ashamed to show you this, but I'm going to. Okay, so here's Puck the Goat. Uh, I don't see him at this point because of the hill. I can hear him. I know he's there, but uh, I don't see him exactly. So then I see the top of his helmet inside this building here, and then he pops back out. Uh, through this door and so when he comes out this door I'm saying okay I got him no I don't got him and the reason I don't is I end up actually hitting his uh, <laughs> I hit his uh, frying pan and I don't get this guy down so I kind of keep firing there uh, I don't think that I'm going to get him shooting through there so what I'm going to do is show you actually what I end up doing. I'm continuously firing and I realize like, okay. And guys, as bad as I screwed that up, I actually did something really good here. Um, I chuck a grenade and it goes exactly where it is that I was trying to throw it, which is rare because I'm terrible at chucking grenades. So get the grenade. Uh, I throw it and I'm pretty sure... Look, he starts firing. I'm not sure where he was firing to, but I think the noise from his ricochets right there didn't allow him to hear the... didn't allow him to realize that there was a grenade right there. Kraboom! He goes down and rushes right back into where he really shouldn't have been, so I get really lucky in getting uh, him down at that point. Uh, it just worked out really well. So Wabis is now uh, leaving the area that he was at. He's working his way up into the circle. Um, and he actually ends up seeing me. And when he sees me, he ends up taking a shot. But he's so far out um, that he just goes ahead and kind of continues to move in uh, to get into the circle, which uh, uh, he ends up being. But then he starts taking fire from the last guy quick. So he switches over, he sees me, hop behind right there, starts to fire, takes a little bit of damage, and then pops up right here, and there's Quick. Almost gets him down. I'm not quite, I mean, I'm not sure how Quick didn't get him. So, all right, guys, we're going to look at the last mistake uh, for this game. Now, this is the mistake that Quick made. So, 
This is what I'm talking about how important movement is in the game. Quick just took a bunch of shots. Did not get her her opponent down. By the way, Quick, love the outfit. Um, purple rain, there you go. Um, here's the problem. If you're in this situation, you're down to three people, you have to move. You have to move. It doesn't matter how small the circle is, you have to move. She ends up staying right where she's at. She does not move. This gives Wabeast enough time to heal up. He gets uh, basically all of his health back. And Quick continues to stay exactly where she is. Now, I'm on the other side at this point. We'll get to me in a second. So, this guy, he's healing up. He ends up moving around. And we'll just look at it from his point of view. So he is looking for whoever it was that was just firing on him. He's looking. Doesn't see anyone. Able to get quick down. Now, and that's the thing, guys. You you, you have to move. You, you, you cannot stay. That Here, basically, she's got really three options. Option number one... Uh, actually, I should say four options. Option number one would be just to get onto the other side of the rock. If she gets onto the other side of the rock, she's basically in the next circle. She's going to be able to hear this guy coming. She's going to be able to get onto this side, lean into a shot, take him out. She can get onto this side of the rock, lean out, take the guy out. Her other option would be go ahead and move into the circle, get behind this tree, get behind this tree, and again, be in a position to take fire or to put fire on that guy. Uh, her third option could have been to even rush down into this area, which isn't really the best option because she knows that there's at least one other person and I'm probably over, uh, over in this area. Her fourth option ends up being the one she chooses, which is stay where you are, right in front of this rock, have absolutely no cover, and that is going to be the result pretty much every single time. So that is the situation. Um, uh, she put herself in and she didn't need to. So I'm going to kind of look at it now from my perspective. Now, what I had done is I had worked my way up from where I was, uh, work over to here, and I'm in a really, really good spot. Um, I've got these hills. I'm, I'm going to be able to have a little bit of an incline. Um, so I'm going to be able to kind of uh, move into places, crouch down, and he's not going to know where I'm at. And on top of that, um, I'm in the circle. He's not in the circle. So I've got a ton of advantage going for me at the moment. I end up shooting the ground there, whatever. So I'm taking some shots at the guy. Uh, I don't hit him. I can't remember if I hit him right there or not. So I go ahead and I chuck a grenade. And I move back over into uh, where I basically was uh, a, a moment ago. I'm reloading. I'm looking for this guy. And he just does not know uh, exactly where I'm at. But I try to put myself back into the position that I just was. The reason I'm trying to do that is I want this guy to continuously think that that is where I'm going to be. Because if that's where he's looking for me once, and now he's going to see me over there twice it's going to be easier for me to actually move around the side. So this guy ends up taking a little bit of damage, uh, not much, but he just moves up, get into the circle, and we'll kind of look at it from his perspective. I chuck another grenade, and he moves into, I think, kind of a bad area. Um, it's very wide open, no real cover, and I pop up, take some more shots, I hit him right there, and so here's the thing I mean this guy now thinks that I'm in the same area that I stayed this is when I make my move now I'm going to move down around the side because I know where this guy is he's far enough away from me that he's not going to hear my initial footsteps and moving over into this area so I switch over to uh, uh, the M4 uh, move over to here I do switch over to the M4 there we go and so now you can see where it is that I'm trying to position myself. This guy is looking for me over there. He's not seeing me. 
Now he's looking back over to the right, so we're going to look at it from his perspective. Moves over, and he gets a bunch of shots on me. But I'm able to get him down. And just so you can see how much damage this guy did to me, look at what my health is. Um, again, this, this guy did a great job and uh, basically getting me, uh, hitting me a lot. But I hope you kind of understand what I mean when I'm talking about um, moving. When you don't get somebody down, you've got to move. You don't want to just stay in the same spot. Now, I stayed in the same spot specifically because I wanted him to think that that's where I was going to stay, but the whole time I knew that I was going to be moving. I was going to be moving over to where I ended up. And, and that's the point. You've got to move, especially when you're at the end of the game and you're shooting someone and you don't get them down quick would have been so much better off to basically move into a new area. Any decision she would have made, even rushing the guy, um, any decision she made would have been better than basically staying in front of that rock. So, alrighty guys, I hope this uh, video kind of helps. I hope it makes a little bit of sense and uh, I hope you learned something from it. Just always be moving, always be thinking about where it is that you need to go, uh, where it is that you need to be, the best way to get there, and then once you get into a fight, where it is that you're going to move if you don't get your opponent down. So, alrighty guys, thanks so much, and we will catch you next time. See ya.